Hello class, I just wanted to spend a few minutes here just to go over problem number five from lab number two, uh, which was the calculator problem where you had to run your calculator program to find uh, certain points on the graph. I noticed that a number of you had trouble with the problem, and I would like to show you this quick little tutorial on problem number five. So we begin by typing in the equation, which I already have set up for you. Uh, so always make sure that when you use your calculator to set up an equation, always double check it to make sure that the syntaxes are correct, that you've entered in each expression and number and exponent correctly. Okay. So then first you graph it just to kind of count up how many things that you have to find. So we can see that there is three x-intercepts along this x-axis here, one, two, and three. Remember, those are called the zeros of the function. And then there's a little local maximum right here at this little peak. I have a little valley right here, so I have a local minimum to find. Uh, but there are no absolute maxes and mins because the graph keeps going up, 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 up. And over here, it keeps going down, 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 down. So there are no absolutes, but there are two local mins and maxes. We also have a little y-intercept, which looks really close to the maximum over here. And then you also have to find the intervals of increase and decrease. And remember, the intervals of increase and decrease are separated by the mins and the maxes. So let's start by finding first the y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept, we hit second trace. So if you need to write down for yourself that number one value, you can use that to get the y-intercept. Number two, zero, you, get that, you use that to get the x-intercepts. And of course, three and four for your mins and maxes. So number one for the y-intercept, click it. And then at the bottom of the screen, you have a little blinking cursor asking you to type in x equals zero. And there you go. The blinking cursor is at the location and the coordinates of that location are at the bottom of the screen at zero and one. Next, let's find the x-intercepts. So I would use number two, the zeros. And then remember what you have to do is, so here's your first x-intercept, but it's not exactly the correct coordinates because remember that the y value needs to, be, needs to be exactly zero. So remember, the calculator is asking you for information. So it's asking you for a left boundary next to this point. So move your cursor to the left a little bit. It's going down, which is fine, but it's going down and to the left. Hit enter, and then the little boundary should pop up. And again, some calculators will show this dotted line and the arrow. Other calculators will just show the arrow at the top and not the dotted line. All right, now the calculator needs more information, a right boundary. So go to the right of the point, and let's back up a little bit so we can see the boundary. So there we go. So now the answer that I want right here where my cursor is, is in between my boundaries. So it's set up correctly, and now I can hit Enter, and there you go. So here is the first x-intercept at negative 0 0.481, 0. Let's get the second point. So second trace. And I'll choose zero again, because remember, x-intercepts are called zeros. And now I want to get to this point right here about where my blinking cursor is showing. So move back to the left a little bit and hit enter for the first boundary. And then move to the right to get the second boundary. And then hit enter one more time, and then everything should resolve. So the blinking cursor is where I want it. And here are the coordinates at the bottom of the screen at 1.311, 0. Let's get the third point. So again, we want number two. <clears throat> so now I need to get to the left side of this root, which is right about there. It's not exactly there because look at the y value. It's not perfectly zero. So back up a little bit to the left to get a left boundary. Move up and to the right to get a right boundary. And then hit enter one last time. And then here are the coordinates of this particular intercept. 3.170 comma, this actually means zero. This is scientific notation for 1.2 times 10 to the negative 12th power. Sometimes your calculator has trouble estimating zeros, like the number zero. So it will give you a very small number like this, which is really 0 0.000000000012. So this would mean you would have actually 11 zeros and the one, and then the two, all right? So notice the decimal would move to the left one place and then 11 places more, um, and that would give you uh, approximately zero. So this is the correct solution. 
Uh, for more information about scientific notation, maybe do a YouTube suit, uh, a YouTube search, excuse me, and just look up scientific notation on graphing calculators to understand more the meaning of this expression. Again, when there's a negative after this E, that means move the decimal here 12 places to the left. If it's positive, then you move it to the right. All right, let's get the mins and the maxes. So let's back up to the max here since it's first. So I'll do second and trace. Let's choose number four. Let me try that again. Second and trace, number four. And I need to back way up over here to the left of the maximum. And then there's a left boundary right about there. And then slide to the right of that maximum. So come back downhill a little bit. Now we're on the right side of the hill. And the hill there is in between my boundaries. So I can hit enter again. And there's the answer. So the coordinates with three decimals are 0.279 and 1.134. Let's get the minimum, number three. You want to move back over to the valley here, a little bit to the left side of the valley. Go to the right side of the valley. We have our boundaries. Now hit enter. And there's your coordinates of 2.387 and negative 1.208. Okay. So now to get the intervals of increase and decrease, so for example, if we use this first point here uh, that's, that's highlighted, uh, we would say that it's increasing over here in this last interval from 2.387 to infinity. So this third interval here is an interval of increase from x equals 2.387 to x equals infinity. Remember, we don't use y values for intervals. Now this middle interval all right, is a decreasing interval, which stops at 2.387. And then the x value for that, um, for that interval is 0.279. So then the interval of decrease in the middle here is from 0.279 over to uh, 2.387. All right, remember, we use the x values. And then this interval of increase comes from the left, so it's negative infinity until this x value under the max. So it's negative infinity to 0.279. And we should have brackets around the actual numbers because everything's solid on the graph. So we would have brackets uh, for each of the numbers of those intervals. And again, to see the solutions, I've posted the solutions for this online on Canvas under announcements. This way you can see a little more clearly uh, the written solutions about uh, the intervals, the points themselves, and how we label them.